so it's finally 2020. A new decade has only just begun. Wild. <laughs> I was sitting at Collectivo earlier, uh, working on a project that will hopefully become something at some point in time. Uh, when out of the corner of my eye, I see someone stop in front of the empty seat across from me. And I look up, and I see the face of someone I know that I knew at some point a long time ago. And they asked me, Do I know you from somewhere? We realized that we went to the same elementary school. Um, and I thought it might have been high school. Um, and that's when I felt old. Because it turns out that they now go to the same high school that I went to. And I was amazed that within a minute of walking in that door, they managed to recognize me. But I was even more astounded by how they remembered me. See, to them, I was the guy who does the podcasts. Which is weird to me, <laughs> because I've only made 14 of them. And they were all made in a strange four-month period of 2019. Which, by the way, they are all available for your viewing pleasure or discomfort on my IGTV if you care to listen to me talk about the universe for far too long. <laughs> I had to plug myself there, sorry. Um, I always said that I didn't know where those videos were going to go. And I called them podcasts on a whim because I didn't know what else to call videos with me talking to a camera in my garage. You know, if I'm being honest. I didn't expect them to be what they became. Um, you could call it low self-esteem or being realistic or some strange combination of the two. Um, but I thought no one would watch them. And... That might be the reason why I was so comfortable opening up as much as I did in them, uh, especially those early ones. Uh, looking back, there is a lot of pain in those videos. Uh, and if you followed along with them, or if you go back and watch them in order, uh, you'll see and hear how my attitude changes over time. Uh, you'll see that I go from sad to reflective, to positive, and happy. And a lot of people reached out to me about those videos. I had long talks about them with friends and family. People who I never would have expected contacted me, and some laughed at what I was doing, but more people supported it. Some told me that they cried while listening to some of those videos. Um, and someone uh, told me that it inspired them. And it was weird to me, uh, because people were listening. You know, sure, there were people who stopped after the first two seconds, and plenty of people who didn't care for what I had to say, but there were people dedicated to hearing me rant and be sad and think about, think about life out loud. And I think that might have been my best work to date. Um, it was scripted, yes, 100%. I still suck at being off the cuff. Um, but those thoughts were 100% mine. Um, those emotions were 120% real. They still are. I stopped making them not because I was busy with the school year. I stopped because they started to feel forced. I caught myself talking about the same stuff. I was trying too hard to be likable and to, to try to figure out a formula when at their best those podcasts were just an emotional kid trying to figure out the world in his garage in front of a camera and that's all they were and that's all they were supposed to be um, but as with everything in my life I got to overthinking to the point where it stopped being fun and I've been thinking about making more for months but yesterday's encounter really got to me and, you know, I figure the world's got to be telling me something, right? 
I've, I've got plenty more stories to tell too. Um, I just want to make sure that it's not just me pushing out content for the sake of having content. Um, I want to enjoy this process and be proud of what I make. Because for me, 2020 is the year I stopped settling. Now that being said, I had a good conversation the other day with Juan about how we all seem to make a big deal about the new year and the end of the decade. Uh, there's a real novelty to newness, you know, the whole new year, new me shtick. Um, see, I think that's a scam. Uh, cause this is the time of year people spend hundreds on gym memberships and gear that they'll never use more than once or twice before they revert back to old habits. Now, it's one thing to say you'll change. That's a completely different thing to actually do it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm no master of change. Hell, I'm still deathly terrified of it. But I'll tell you what's helped me deal with the change that I've gone through in my life and what's helped me follow through with some of my resolutions over the past few years. First, I'd recommend that you write down what you want to change and you put it in a place that you're going to see every single day. I find that physically writing things down with pen and paper makes it feel more official, more real. Um, and I have mine here, wrote these the other day. Uh, actually, first day of the new year, and I've had them on my desk and I've looked at them every day since. It's only been like three, four days, so we'll see. Uh, but you gotta remind yourself every day, and you gotta remember why you want to change. And you gotta feel strongly about those reasons, because you can talk about all the change you want to make, but it does absolutely no good if you're not motivated and dedicated to acting on it. And here's the most important part in my opinion. You gotta start small. I think one reason why many people fail to follow through with their goals and especially their New Year's resolutions is because they give themselves huge, abstract, and oftentimes unrealistic goals without any sort of plan to get there. Um, because you have to think beyond the goal itself. It's like a marathon, right? You don't finish it by like being dead set on only the end itself. First, you make it a quarter of the way, then you make it halfway, then you make three-fourths of the way, and then, then, then you think about the finish line, right? And I'm saying you gotta keep the end in mind, but also figure out your path to get there. What steps do you need to take in between points A and B? So I suggest that you set time frames and consequences for yourself. Instead of new year, new me, think about where you're starting, really reflect, look on who you left last year as, as a human being, you know, physically, emotionally, all these things, and then think about where you want to end. I think that whole new year, new me stuff makes it seem like you, you do some magic and some drastic change in a matter of 24 hours. That's not how change works, sadly. I've fallen for that trap. You really have to want it and you have to be consistent in your pursuit of it. The you you want to be isn't just about to hop out behind from behind a corner as you're walking down the street. It's definitely not gonna knock on your door like they do in the publisher's clearinghouse ads and give you a crap ton of balloons and a check, right? Look at some of the most prolific people of all time. Look at some of the greatest athletes of all time. Let's take Michael Jordan, for example. Arguably the best basketball player of all time. He didn't wind up in the GOAT conversation by being a one-hit wonder. He didn't just score a lot of points and win one title and call it a day. He committed himself to his craft, he practiced, and was consistent in clutchness, dedication, drive. The point is, you don't get to the mountaintop by working out once or doing something incredible one time. You know. The other day I heard, not sure from where, but I heard that the greats aren't great because they did something miraculous once. They became great because they put in work consistently and got consistent results. You can do this. But again, you have to want it. And you have to put in work every single day to get it. 
spend your time. Don't waste it in 2020. And this goes for everything. Creative endeavors, character development, physical change. I believe in you. And now you have to believe in yourself. And once you get there, the real challenge becomes maintaining it. But uh, that's a whole different can of worms. And I'm not even there yet. So follow through on your resolutions, please. Hopefully this helps. I'll be seeing you around, hopefully, very, very soon.